Hey everybody, it's me, Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, back with an update on your free speech rights on the internet. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has affirmed the dismissal of Maria Rutenberg's free speech lawsuit against Twitter for moderating and then banning Donald Trump's account back in January of 2021. I've covered this lawsuit several times before. I'll put a link here in a bubble. Rutenberg's lawsuit went like this. Donald Trump was the president at the time. Trump used Twitter to make official presidential proclamations. Twitter banned Trump. Therefore, Rutenberg's free speech rights were violated. If you're failing to connect the dots in there, you're not alone. Many legal commentators, including myself, could not see a valid claim that Twitter banning Trump somehow injured Rutenberg or in some legally cognizable way. But that didn't stop Ms. Rutenberg from pursuing the case. She filed her original complaint in January of 2021, shortly after Twitter banned Trump. She almost immediately filed an amended complaint. She moved for a temporary restraining order at the same time. That was denied. The court issued an order to show cause why the case should not be dismissed in the beginning of February. The case was finally dismissed on April 9th, just three months later. Ruttenberg and her attorney appealed to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Now, the Ninth Circuit has confirmed the dismissal of Ruttenberg's case. Ruttenberg's complaint basically alleges that, by hosting Donald Trump's Twitter account as President of the United States, Trump's account and or Twitter became state actors. That is, they acted as the G-Man, a government agent, a government entity, and therefore Rotenberg is entitled to all of the constitutional protections against government or state action, including the First Amendment's prohibition against abridgment of Rotenberg's freedom of speech by the government. And so Rotenberg brings a Section 1983 civil rights complaint for Twitter's deprivation of her right to free speech, this is the holy grail of free speech anarchy, to turn every social media platform into a public square devoid of moderation that infringes on First Amendment rights. Defendant Twitter and the District Court and now the Ninth Circuit panel all disagreed with that logic, saying that Rotenberg's federal claim is so insubstantial, implausible, foreclosed by prior decisions of this court, or otherwise completely devoid of merit, as not to involve a federal controversy. Without a live case or controversy, a federal district court will not have jurisdiction to hear a case, and that's what happened in the district court in Maria Rotenberg's complaint against Twitter. Now, let's see what the Ninth Circuit had to say. The first thing to note here is this giant not-for-publication label at the top of the page, and the corresponding note that the case is not precedential. So this is not a precedential opinion. We're not creating new law here. The decision is based entirely on existing law and doesn't need to create new law to issue a complete decision. And this appeal is before a three-judge panel of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. This isn't a one-judge ruling. This is a three-judge ruling. And if a party wishes to appeal this decision, they can ask for a ruling by the entire court, or at least a larger panel sitting en banc. So our three-judge panel Judges McEwen, Fletcher, and Vreidel write, Rutenberg appeals the district court's dismissal of her claims without leave to amend. We have jurisdiction and we affirm. We review, de novo, brand new, the district court's dismissal for lack of subject matter jurisdiction and its interpretation of federal law. Although the district court dismissed this case for lack of subject matter jurisdiction, we affirm on the ground that Rutenberg has failed to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. So the Ninth Circuit panel thinks that it's better to dismiss Rutenberg's complaint for failing to connect the dots between an injury and a recognizable claim instead of on jurisdiction grounds. The district court properly dismissed Rutenberg's First Amendment claim. She did not allege sufficient facts to infer that the defendant's Twitter engaged in state action when the company moderated or suspended the former president's Twitter account. The First Amendment's free speech clause prohibits the government, not a private party, from abridging speech. And the court cites to the Prager University v. Google decision a Ninth Circuit decision in 2020. Prager University sued Google and YouTube for demonetization. I've gone over that case as well. Here's a bubble. 
Dismissal was proper because the complaint lacked a cognizable legal theory or sufficient, well-pled, non-conclusory factual allegations to state a plausible claim for relief. Rutenberg offers insufficient facts to infer a close nexus between Twitter's conduct on the one hand and the government on the other, which is required to find that Twitter's conduct constituted state action. To the contrary, Rutenberg acknowledges that Twitter exercised its own discretion and authority in moderating President Trump's account, and that Twitter acted as President Trump's opponent in doing so. Twitter was not a willful participant in any joint activity with the president, and its conduct was not state action. Rutenberg's contention that Twitter abused a delegation of authority when it moderated President Trump's account is of no moment. This abuse of authority doctrine does not apply, whereas here, the challenged action is undertaken by a private party rather than a state official. Indeed, it would be ironic to conclude that Twitter's imposition of sanctions against a public official, sanctions the official steadfastly opposed, is state action. It would be ironic to conclude that Twitter's imposition of sanctions against a public official, sanctions the official steadfastly opposed, is state action. Similarly, President Trump did not delegate a public function to Twitter within the meaning of Supreme Court and Circuit precedent. The relevant function here, moderating speech on the Twitter platform, is not an activity that only government entities have traditionally performed. Merely hosting speech by others is not a traditional exclusive public function. See the Prager University case. Moderation of content on a video streaming platform was not a public function. Rutenberg presents no additional facts in her proposed amended complaints that alter the foregoing analysis, nor does she advance arguments on appeal demonstrating that her complaints are salvageable. Affirmed. I think I get the argument from Rutenberg's side. In today's online society, some social media platforms are more popular and more useful than others. For example, Facebook and WhatsApp are the most popular social media near me. I don't like Facebook. But if I want to interact with my local community, I need to keep using it. When 70% or 80% or 90% of your community's population uses a social media platform, that gives that platform a lot of power over the people in that community. When Twitter becomes the most popular platform for the United States president to use to communicate with the masses, the, the lawful masses, and then Twitter bans the president, I could see how Rutenberg felt like she lost something her favorite way to interact with the president, and that could feel like an infringement of a right. But not everything is a right. We have this discussion about other topics every single day. The concept that not everything is a right should not be new to adult citizens. It might be clear as mud sometimes, but it is right there in the Constitution. Some rights are delegated to the judicial branch. Some rights are delegated to the legislative branch. Some rights are delegated to the executive branch. Some rights are left to the states, and some rights are left to the people. Figuring out what those rights are can certainly be difficult at times. But what is clearly well established is that the First Amendment only protects you against the government's abridgment of your speech. Since Twitter is not the government, doesn't act as the government, it's not a state actor, Twitter can abridge your speech on its platform all day. And the best claim you might have is for a violation of a contract that you have with Twitter, the terms of service. But Twitter is not the government. But, 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 I can hear you say, there was that Knight First Amendment Institute case, the case where the court said that Trump couldn't use Twitter's tools to block constituents. A case that, while later thrown out, stood for the premise that Trump's Twitter account is a state or government actor. I've covered this case as well. I'll put another link in a bubble. The Knight First Amendment Institute case was different because of one major detail, a distinction that makes the difference. In Knight First Amendment Institute, Trump was accused of blocking other Twitter users, some of whom were constituents, voters. So the entity or actor doing the blocking was Donald Trump himself or someone from his social media team. 
before it was thrown out, the Knight First Amendment Institute case meant that government actors couldn't block their constituents on social media because every constituent has a First Amendment right to hear the proclamations of their government. When the government blocks you from hearing the proclamations of the government, that is state action and subject to the protections of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. But in Maria Rutenberg's case, it was Twitter that was doing the blocking or, or banning. As the Ninth Circuit says, merely hosting speech by others is not a traditional public function, citing to the Prager University case. Twitter's hosting of Trump's presidential proclamations did not make Twitter the exclusive state-sponsored provider of all governmental communications. Instead, Trump chose to use Twitter because of its popularity, and eventually Twitter disagreed with Trump's use of the platform and banned him within its terms of service. A private social media company does not become a governmental actor simply because it hosts governmental speech. Now. Will social media ever become a protected state actor public square such that the First Amendment does apply? I seriously doubt it. Platforms would likely become unusable very quickly. Platforms would have to tolerate all speech that doesn't violate a handful of criminal statutes, such as the Brandenburg Line inciting a riot, certain protections against child abuse, or the doxing of public officials. But no other moderation could be done. It would be an unusable mess. So is that the end of the Rutenberg versus Twitter case? Probably not. Rutenberg's attorney has said that they intend to appeal to the Ninth Circuit on bunk. With such a weak case, I really can't imagine there is any meritorious reason for pursuing the claim. Perhaps it's about the publicity. Let me know what you think of Maria Rutenberg's case in the comments below. Oh, and to watch a video about how a privately owned company town did become a state actor, see the Marsh v. Alabama case. A link in the bubble here. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my top supporters in May, John Steele, Evie, Spirit Bear, Benjamin Hightoff, Ugly Grill, Torpedon, Good Broge, Shadow Tycho, Earthbound Star, Pure Magma, Eric Tams, Tech Tech Potato, The Blood Soaked Survivors, Wyatt Calandro, and King Ares. You can support Lawful Masses on Patreon.com slash LJ French, Sponsus.com slash Law, through YouTube memberships, and through Floatplane subscriptions. Join me for my weekly live production stream on twitch.tv slash lawful masses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. I hope everyone has a great week. I love you all. Bye.